Hi, my name is Richard Capone, and I'm the CEO of Let's Go Learn. And today I'm going to talk to you about data-driven personalized learning. So let's first back up and look at the evolution that got us to the point of data-driven personalized learning. We see that in the 90s, there was really uh, generation one testing, which is taking tests, and put it online, right? Very soon afterwards, it turned into adaptive testing, where you now have testing that adjusts to the user in real time, but it was still a lot of it was accountability uh, driven, meaning it was uh, state tests or tests to measure benchmarks uh, quarterly where students were at. And then around 2011, you see a large industry shift where it became really accepted that data now can continuously come and drive personalized learning. And you saw this in um, individualized courses. You saw um, data starting to work into the classroom, into the sites for evaluation. Um, of course, at Let's Go Learn, we were doing personalized learning back in 2007, 2008. But mainstream, this is when the industry recognized it. This is when a lot of schools started adopting it. It was around 2011. Now, this puts us into new territory. Generation three and four um, testing is allowing for continuous data to drive personalized learning. And now, as an organization, what's important is to not think of testing as separate. It really is about personalized learning. And we have to think about all of it together. And this is where um, we're going to talk about how you as an organization to get to this generation three and four, which is data-driven personalized learning. So how does Let's Go Learn do this? How do we support you? So the first thing is we support the model of the district. And this is important to realize because all districts have lots of initiatives. And if we cannot support your particular initiative, then we're not going to really help you be successful. But a lot of the district initiatives are too high level. So what we're going to try to do is operationalize them for district personnel, site personnel, as well as classroom teachers. And this is really important to do this. And I'll explain a little bit more of this in a little bit. The second thing is providing all stakeholders with meaningful data. So when you have data, do you understand what it means? Is it actionable? And that's what we do. So data in our system for students, parents, teachers, administrators are all actionable. It's not vague, like a, a, like a 776 number or a 45% uh, uh, norm reference score. It's not, that's too vague. The last thing is to lower the threshold for teachers to implement personalization. Okay, teachers have so much on their plate. So we, they can't be trying to figure out things, trying to interpret scores. We need to lower the threshold so they can immediately personalize right from the get-go. Okay, so how do we do this? So first of all, in reading, we target every student's CPD across the multiple subtests of reading. We don't look at reading as a large single score or two scores. We look at it in terms of six to seven scores. And this is what you see. Every student we find their CPD. If you're using uh, vague scores, you end up inaccurately placing students into um, instruction, which is sometimes too hard, too low, and very rarely is it right on. Because when you take an average score, an average score is going to be off when you start looking at all the individual scores. You're not able to find out those exact ZPD points. In mathematics, it's actually even more difficult because math, uh, foundational mathematics is essentially 44 subtests, okay? 44 sub skills, addition, subtraction, multiplications. And again, we find the student's ZPD in all of these areas. If you had a single RIT score in numbers and operation or a summary score, you'd see in this graph, you're going to be missing it. Sometimes you're going to be too high, sometimes too low. The student will be frustrated, the student will be bored, and very rarely are you actually hitting it right on. So this is important. The first thing is important is accurate granular data. That's what I'm explaining. Now, in our view, how does this sort of, what's our model? Our model is the AI model, assessment and instruction continuous. You assess, you instruct, and you continuously adjust your instruction by, by doing this. Now, good teachers do this automatically. Now, if we also expand this model, we see that the standards are on the outside. So the standards are where we want to get to. And then we have different types of testing. There's summative testing, there's diagnostic informative. We focus on the diagnostic informative. Now let's go ahead and operationalize this for the teacher. So the teacher is in a classroom and what do they need to do? They need to teach whole class, they need to teach small group, and they need to teach uh, personalized learning or drive personalized le learning. And the way they do this is by having good diagnostic data and also progress monitoring informative data. And again, it's a continuous cycle. They do this and allows them to reach the standards that are on the outside. Now, if we look at a lot of districts have RTI or they're following RTI model or a modified RTI. And what we're going to do 
is we operationalize this by supporting all three tiers. So whole class is tier one, pull out is tier two, and tier three is special ed. We're one of the few companies where our assessments are used for IEPs and for writing plaques. Um, so we help all three tiers. Now, one thing you'll notice in our tier one there, what happens is a lot of districts, because so many students are behind, over 15%, they have to address gaps within tier one. And so that's why within tier one, you have personalized learning, small group, and whole class. So this is really important to realize that in the end of the day, you need diagnostic data everywhere, especially in, in a lot of the districts um, in urban and cities, just because so many students are diverse and they're behind. Okay, so how does this work in a diverse district? Unfortunately, districts buy lots of materials um, and so it's very fragmented, a lot of it's funding. You have federal funding, you have special ed funding, um, and so you have all these different programs and it's fragmented. We're gonna tie it all together with our data-driven personalized learning platform. So the data pulls it together, the platform pulls it together. If you're using our intervention, the LGL Edge series, students can get automated instruction. The teachers can also use and assign lessons based on the data to support the core classroom. Um, or also it can be used just purely to measure pre-post academic gains for different programs as well. And now on a district level, if we take a look at this, this is the big shift we're going to help districts do. Historically, when you think about testing, districts are just doing post-testing. They're looking at summative scores. How did we do? How did we do this quarter? How did we do at the end of the year? What we're doing is shifting data to the very front, saying now the data is going to tell us what we should do so we're going to become better instructional leaders. Now when you have good data, it also is better able to measure pre-positions and post-positions. So actually, ironically, it's actually better at measuring growth than summative data because it's more granular. At the teacher level, we're supporting personalization. Can the teacher know exactly what to do for each child? Can they engage the student? Can they create dynamic, flexible groups on a daily basis? Um, so that's all the stuff that we're gonna try to do. Now, in terms of our product offering, of course, we have our platform, which is a personalized learning platform, lots of great ways to look at data, slice data, but we also have uh, products, right? And so there's the reading assessment, which is DORA, reading and Spanish. We have Adam and DOMA, which are the math assessments. Um, and then we finally have uh, LGL Edge series, which is the personalized learning course which creates a 60 lesson course for every student in reading or math. Of course, it's using the data to do this. And then finally, we have iLink, which is free resource to link free content or free material like Khan Academy for each student. So each student gets a personalized uh, path into Khan Academy. Okay, so that is uh, Let's Go Learn in a nutshell. Watch part two to actually see the system in action. Thank you.